Hello, Bridgewater. Hello. Welcome back to the football podcast, NFL version. Yes. I'm Brandon Wells. And I'm Justin Rogers. And uh, if you listen to our three-hour podcast, we apologize for that crazy length last time. We talked about our predictions. Uh, my predictions have not been very well. Most of my predictions have since fallen off. Yeah, some of my predictions have actually starting to come true. My biggest one is Seattle. Looking like they're going to make the playoffs now, so I'm happy about that. But, I mean, a lot of things have happened since then, though. I mean, we talked about how Kansas City is most likely going to be that number one seed. And they probably will still have that number one seed. But now without Kareem Hunt, like, what are you going to do if you're Kansas City? Kansas City will still get the number one seed. Hold on. Let's look at their schedule real quick. I'm getting all my uh, sources off uh, just Google. Just looking it all up. Yep. So the Chiefs remaining schedule this week, they're in Kansas City against Baltimore. Then the Chargers come to Kansas City. Then Kansas City goes to Seattle, and then Oakland comes to Kansas City. Those three games. That is a th- that's a tough three game push. Yeah. Let's so, look at the Patriots. Hold up. The Patriots might get that number one seed. Sadly. So the Patriots are in Miami this week. Uh, then they're in Pittsburgh. Uh, then Buffalo comes to them, and then the Jets started them. Okay, so they have three out of those four games are easy wins. And they have the tiebreaker over Kansas City. This is true. Uh, Patriots so, yeah. are the number one seed. Sorry, Kansas City fans. So if Kansas City loses two out of those three, Texans could get number two. What if the Chargers end up winning that division? Oh, my They're gosh. only one game behind. They <laughs> and they play schedule. them, right? Yeah. No, hold on. No, they look. don't. The Chargers schedule. They have Cincinnati this week. They'll win that, of course. Uh, yeah, the next week they're in Kansas City. Then they have the Ravens and Broncos. Chargers have a tough push, too. They both, that division's going to be tough to see. I like that division. It's fun. And the Broncos are on the rise. I, th- I have the Broncos right now getting that sixth seed. Colts falling off right now. Uh, I think Baltimore, it's only a matter of time before they fall apart. Yeah. Yeah, that leaves Chargers and Broncos, my prediction. Anyway, let's talk about uh, recent news. Let's uh, head over to Washington and talk about what's going on with them Redskins, who, by the way, my biggest upset I picked to win that division. Full confidence last time. Oh, you That's never could have predicted their number one and number two quarterback. Both went down with the same injury. Yeah. The way that they both did. And then they picked up Mark Sanchez, of all people. And then they the just waivers. picked up Josh Johnson off waivers, too. And no one knows who that is. <laughs> I don't know who Josh Johnson is. Do you? He drafted to the Buccaneers, then he just bounced like from five different teams. I've never heard of him until now. But What if Sanchez goes down with the same injury? Oh, I hope. Knock on wood there right now. Yeah, I really hope not. Or what if Sanchez somehow pulls out, like, a four-game win streak? and What if Sanchez pulls a Nick Foles and wins the Super Bowl? Oh, my. I don't think that's (laughs) going to happen because he doesn't have the same talent that Foles had around him. Um, But that that would be hilarious, though, if that actually happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your boys, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers over there, losing their star running back for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll see. We have Jalen Samuels coming up, and right now he says he could, you know, potentially. I mean, he's showing he's a running back. I read an article today that he, he coming into the draft, he was listed as a tight end, and so and like not even a running back. So he's our third string running back coming in the year, and now he's starting, and he's going to show that he, especially against the Raiders defense, that's very suspect. That you know, not very good against the run. I think. He will show, he'll probably get, I think, 80, 90 yards rushing maybe. You know, he's a good passer, pass, um, you know, receiver, catching the ball. I mean, we saw that when we almost won against San Diego, but that was a good game except for, you know, some of the calls by the refs. But, you know, what can you do games over? What's San Diego? Oh, whatever. Los <laughs> Angeles, bro. I'm still in that San Diego phase. But, but yeah, so... Uh, I think we can, you know, as Pittsburgh move on from that. I mean, if he doesn't play against New England, that might hurt us. But I think we definitely need James Conner back when we play New Orleans. He'll definitely be back for the playoffs, no doubt. Yeah. But, yeah, he does. I got you guys going 2-2 two two right now. Uh, you guys can never beat Tom Brady in the Pats, ever. Yeah. And then you're in New Orleans playing the Super Dome. It's going to be yeah. kind of rough. But if you guys watch enough Cowboy, uh, cowboy film, maybe. Right. I think if our, if our defense steps up, which I, I don't know, it's been hit and miss, just like Roethlisberger, he's been hit and miss, like, 
beginning of the season wasn't that good, and then middle of the season he just was playing lights out, and then like past four or five games he's starting to pick every game. Um, in, my, so. in my opinion, the key to victory against the Saints is getting Drew Brees' face because he's small, he's short, so if you're constantly in his face, yep. it, he, he's not going to be able to do much. And then cover um, Kamara on the screen. Yeah. Because if he, the ball gets in Kamara's hands, he's dangerous, especially in open field. If you cover Kamara in the flats on the screen and then get in Drew Brees' face, right. just let Ben Roethlisberger and A.B. take it over. Yeah, but I also but, think that Pittsburgh, we, at some point, we need to be committed to the run. You can't put everything in Roethlisberger's hands. We've seen what's happened with that past three games he's going to pick. Yeah. So so what do you think about Spencer Ware? What do you, what do you, how do you like his odds over in Kansas City stepping up and... I mean, I haven't really seen him play the last couple games, but just from what I've seen the past couple seasons of him playing in Kansas City, I think he's a decent running back. Like, yeah. he's a good backup. Last week he got but... 48 yards and a touchdown, I think it was. Okay. And that's what I think I remember seeing. Okay, he so got that's... a decent amount of carries, but... Yeah, so that, you know, it's not that bad for well, him. Well, we have but... Mahomes passing for four and five touchdowns a game. You don't really have to rely on that uh, running game too much. Right, but again, though, you don't... Like any team, you don't want to put the hands, you know, the quarterback. For sure. You know, put the ball in the quarterback's hands the entire time. It's nice to have a running game. I think what like Kansas that. City really needs to do, they really need to get creative with their coaching. They need to run the end routes, uh, the end around, you know, get the ball in Tyreek Hill's hands. Yes. Just no matter what, the screens, the rounds, the mm-hmm. trick plays, you know, if you get the ball in Tyreek Hill's hands, he'll make magic happen. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that as well. So what do you have? Uh, do you want to move on to playoff predictions? Yeah, let's move on. Or do we have more uh, injuries to, to talk about? I don't think we have any injuries right now we can talk yeah, not about. not really too much going on right now, is there? Mm-mm. So uh, over in the AFC East, of course, the Pats are going to win that. I don't see anyone else winning that. Yep. Obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, the Dolphins are 6-6, six and six, but I think they're going to... I don't know what their schedule is, but I think they're gonna not going to... No, they're definitely not. So, make just... I'll ball in there right now. My predictions, I'm going to have the Patriots in the AFC at first seed, Chiefs at second seed, Texans at third seed, Steelers at fourth seed, the Chargers at fifth seed, and then the Broncos at the sixth seed. Okay. They're only one game behind Baltimore. I think they can pull it off. I have a question. Who, If it, if both the Chiefs and the Texans were somehow 13-3, and who would win the tiebreaker? Would the Chiefs win the tiebreaker? Have they played each other? I don't think they It'd be whoever scored the most amount of points off the year. Well, then that would be Kansas City. Yeah, most or likely. strength of schedule. One of those two. Okay. Cause I could definitely see the Texans getting the number two seed, and then the Chiefs falling down. I like down. Houston a lot right now. Do you think Houston could pull it off this year? Straight up, honestly? No. They're on a nine-game win streak. You can't get any harder than that. I mean, come on. It's a nine-game... Well, look, I mean, look who they've played. Let's, let's look at who the Texans have played, and maybe... Because some of their wins, like, were very... Yeah, they uh, suspect wins and all right. So you got so from their win streak. I mean, let's see. So their first game of the year was against New England, and they lost only twenty-seven to twenty. Mm-hmm. And then and they, then they lost by three points to the Titans. To the Titans and division game. Barely. So the three losses are like they barely lost, mm-hmm. and they barely won against the Colts in overtime. Yep, barely won against the Cowboys in, in overtime. overtime. Barely won against the Bills as well. Have to beat the Jags. Yep. And then went to work on the Dolphins, forty-two to twenty-three. And then barely won against the Broncos. Barely won against the Redskins. And then dismantled the Titans. And Browns. And the Browns. So like most of their wins are close. And right now, looking at the rest of their schedule, they could win out. They they will win out. Yeah. I mean, maybe the three. Eagles. The Eagles might be that no. one game. No. You don't think so? Absolutely not. Eagles okay. have no running back. It's None true. whatsoever. It is true. So just put J.J. Watt on that rushed quarterback team the whole day long, and Carson Wentz will make his own mistakes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, yeah, I think the Texans are going to win out. So, I mean, we were talking before about – they did play the Chiefs in preseason in one, though. So, preseason doesn't mean anything. I know it doesn't. I just wanted to oh say that. Oh, my goodness, Justin. <laughs> I just wanted to say that, though, because I saw it and got excited for two seconds. But – What if the Chiefs end up getting the sixth seed and – Fifth seed and Chargers win that division. That'd be crazy. I like the Chargers right now. I really like the Chargers. I saw like the top four or five candidates for MVP, and Philip Rivers is on that list. Like I was surprised he should to see be, yeah. him on that list. He had that perfect game. Only he uh, record for most complete passes in a row without any completion. Mm-hmm. It was like twenty four completions. Yeah, it's crazy. 
My ideal Super Bowl right now is the LA Bowl. I would love to see the Chargers and the Rams come to Atlanta. And that would be awesome to see, though. I think it would be cool to see. I would just love. I mean, I'm a Pittsburgh fan, and like always, as always, like as a fan of a team, you want to see them go to the Super Bowl. But if I would love to see Philip Rivers get a ring, that'd be awesome to see. I would. I would love to see that. You know, and then that. I think it was an and 06 Antonio Gay was. still hasn't retired, so he can walk away and with the ring. And he can walk too. away with the ring. Yeah. That would be an awesome story. I would, I would love to see Antonio Gates walk away with the ring, even though he's been very quiet for like three or four years. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I forgot he was still playing until I watched Chargers highlights the other day. It was like, Antonio Gates? Right. Oh, yeah, Antonio Gates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that would be cool. But, yeah, so I'm going to say right now... That the Patriots are going to get the one seed. I'm going to give the Texans the two seed. They're going to win out. And I think the Chiefs are going to lose one of their games. And I'm going to give the Chargers... I think they're gonna, I'm going to give them the five seed. I think they're going to lose that one game to the Chiefs. Because it's in Kansas City. Um, oh, Kareem Hunt. I still think the Chiefs are going to win that game. Who um, won the first matchup? I, feel, I think the Chiefs... Uh, the Chiefs yeah, won. Chiefs, Chiefs won, won by won 10. Yeah. Uh, first game of the season. Yeah. I, so I'm going to no. give the Chiefs the third seed. Chiefs are not taking... No, it's going to be one and one. Okay. I, I like the Chargers' defense. I'm and then do. I'll give Pittsburgh the fourth seed. And then fifth seed will be Chargers. Sixth seed? It's hard because I want to give it to Baltimore, even though I hate Baltimore. I want to give it to Baltimore because they're just looking good right now ever since they're lost to Pittsburgh. But with Lamar Jackson, with his... I believe it was a concussion. Or some sort of injury he had an RG three coming in. I don't know. He'll be back soon. Yeah. So Lamar Jackson, he's just, he reminds me so much of Cam Newton. You know, he can run really, really well and he's athletic, but his arm accuracy just yeah. He can't quite get the ball where it needs to be and it's gonna lead to some turnovers when they play against big teams. Yeah. If they do make it to the playoffs, they're absolutely one and done. Right. Lamar Jackson is not I'm not saying he won't ever be. Just right now he's not ready. Okay. Right, and just that sixth seed is so hard to say because I think each of these teams has one team they can lose against. Broncos have the Chargers. I believe the Ravens also play the Chargers. So that's a team they could possibly lose against. Right now you have three sets and sixes, Dolphins, Broncos, and Colts, and the Titans. So that's four. And then the Ravens at seven and five. Any of them. Okay, not the Dolphins. Not the Dolphins. Not the Titans. What's the Colts? It's between the Broncos, the Colts... And the Ravens. The Ravens have a one-game lead right now on that. Right. The Colts are the schedule. They're in Houston this week. That'll Dallas be- comes to Indianapolis. Then the Giants come to Indy. Then the Colts go to Tennessee. All right. I think Colts don't make the playoffs based no. on that schedule. I think they'll lose to the Texans win- and the Cowboys. They'll go one and three. I th- I'm losing to Tennessee, too. Okay. So Colts don't make the playoffs. We said that. Dolphins won't make the playoffs. So it's between the Ravens and the Broncos. And we also said Titans don't make the playoffs. And Broncos, no, they're on injury. Emmanuel Sanders out for the year. Right, so that... They have no receiving core anymore, and hardly a quarterback. Philip Lindsay is going to be doing it all. Yeah. By the way, we were talking on the way over here to talk. I think Philip Lindsay is better than Saquon Barkley. I do. He has 20 less yards on 50 less carries. Yeah. And that at the beginning of the year, he was hardly getting the ball at all. That's why he has so less carries. Yeah. But he's doing more with less. It's true. And he's undrafted. Yeah, I would say I do like Saquon more because he can take more carries. Plus, the Giants also have OBJ. Yeah, that is true. The Broncos under receivers like deep threats that they have to really worry about. Yeah, that's also true. But I feel like Saquon, I think both of those running backs right now, they are their offenses. The reason they're winning games are because of both of those players. Oh, absolutely. So I, I think it is definitely a toss-up right now for who's the better running back, but I want to just give it to Saquon. And Von Miller is mm-hmm. quietly having a Von Miller type of year. Yeah. We haven't talked about him a lot this year, but he's doing the same thing he always does. That's true. He's getting those sacks, he's getting those trips, getting those turnovers. Yeah. So based off what we were saying, I think I want to give the six seed to the Ravens right now. Right now, but and okay. maybe like two weeks from now, I'll probably change it to the Broncos or someone else. Maybe the Colts will just start upsetting teams. I mean, we don't know. You know, like a month ago, we said that different teams, like you said, like, oh, the Colts are going to make the playoffs. And now, like, we're saying, oh, no, they won't. So it's like three, we still have four weeks left in the season. At Anything the end of the day, it doesn't happen. matter. The sixth seed in the AFC this year, one and done. Yeah. No matter who it is. Yeah. The AFC is tough. Yeah. The, Patriots, Chiefs, Chargers, Texans. 
Steelers. Possibly. They're all like, really yeah, good teams. They, yeah. But then we go to the NFC. So now we have the NFC. We're looking at... Let's look at East Division right now. Let's look at the Dallas Cowboys and the Eagles, Redskins, Giants, and the NFC East. I well, mean, the Giants, Giants are pretty much already out. They'll get, like, maybe one more win this year. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles are just not the same team. They're too injury burdened. They have no running back. Yeah. Uh, the Redskins are on a very low streak. They're on a three-game losing streak. Yeah. In, and they all have... And now they're Mark Sanchez starting quarterback. Forget about it. Yeah. So Cowboys, by default wins yeah I, even if they go like eight and eight they'll probably still win the yeah cowboys can probably lose out. well i don't know about lose out but yeah eight and eight you're right but that cowboy defense look what they did against the saints home to like 150 yards something like that yeah i like the cowboys defense a lot and that rookie vander escher however you say his oh name? vander Ash. yeah he's well he's the he's solution to their sean lee getting hurt problem he's really good so he is really good that was a great and zeke is officially taking his mantle over his Top dog again. All right, so here is y your schedule for the Cowboys. I don't think I think they can go at least nine and seven. So they have the Eagles. That's all you need to do week. in the East. So Eagles, win Colts, the Eagles, Bucks, win the Colts. Giants. They could win out. They can. They could win out. Although Bucks tricky game. Colts can we, are. Here. Can we get some uh, Jamison Crablets or can we get some Fitzmagic that game? <laughs> I don't know. I was looking at some mock drafts um, for this upcoming NFL draft, and it was already saying how James Winston's done, like his stint, and he's not good. There is done, and they're going to draft someone else. So I don't know. We'll see. So I'm yeah. them getting two of the tickable. Yeah. They like them Alabama quarterback words. They like them Alabama quarterbacks. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll go to the NFC North, and that's the Bears. Like the Bears. I think they could clinch their division this weekend. They got a two-game lead. Yep. Nah, I don't think they can do it. Uh, if the Vikings lose. If the Vikings lose, and they win. Yeah. So they could. And the Vikings are playing Seattle this week, right? So mm -hmm. It's going to be a good game. Yes. That's huge for Seattle. That is very big for Seattle. It's big for both teams, right? Now. It's actually probably bigger for Minnesota, honestly. Because Minnesota's more on the brink of Seattle's missing the Seattle's getting fifth seed. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, I mean... Packers are eliminated. Oh, we didn't even talk about Mike McCarthy getting fired. Yeah, Mike McCarthy getting fired. <laughs> we didn't even talk about that. Oh, man. And, like, possible coaching candidates for that job. Like, I heard that um, Mike McDaniels, or Josh McDaniels, Josh McDaniels, for the No. For the Josh McDaniels, no. No? <laughs> I'm telling you, the reason, so, last year, Josh Daniels got this big offer to go head coach in Indianapolis. It's not a bad job. You get Angel coming back up, you know, great quarterback. Not a bad job. Last minute, he was like, nah, I guarantee you, this is what happened. Belichick pulled him aside and he like, look, I'm retiring. I'd rather after this year or next year, this team is yours when I leave. <laughs> That's what happened. He was like, yes, I want to stay a Pat if I'm going to get this head coaching job. That's oh what happened. Gosh. Josh McDaniels is the future head coach of the New England Patriots. Okay. 100%. That's exactly what Bill Belichick told him. Okay. Then I can't really see who could possibly be... Packers head coach, like what would it be? Uh, like? Names escaping right now. A high state head coach just retired. You think Urban Meyer could that possibly? Would be funny. Get, that'd I'd be love awesome. to see Urban Meyer come to Green yeah. Bay. He said he isn't, but of course we've heard that. Would be like a times. Nick Saban thing though, when Nick Saban was in LSU and then he went to Miami. They've like, apparently talked to Jim uh, Harbaugh too, from Michigan. That would be fun. That'd be fun to see him come back to the NFL. Yeah. All right, so. Packers are out, Lions are out, Vikings are on the verge of possibly being out, but they could make no, the, get that sixth seed. Well, so, um, so you got the Bears winning that division, and the Saints are winning the South. Panthers are on a skid. They're on a four lose streak. Yeah. And yeah, so at six and six, we have Eagles, Redskins, Vikings are six five and one, and then the Panthers at six and six. Those are the contenders right now for that sixth seed. The Panthers on a four game lose streak. They're done. Redskins third string quarterback. They're done. Eagles just not looking up to par. So that means default. They're done. Like, By, Vikings are going to get it. Okay. I don't even know if they'll finish 8-8, eight eight, but they're going to get it. Well, they can't, I guess, finish 8-8. Eight eight, so. so like 8-7-1. Yeah. But... <sighs> it's interesting. Again, like the... Like... NFC is weak this week. It's weird saying that. It's weird saying the NFC is weak finally, but... Because like they are. we said the exact opposite coming into the season. Like, AFC is so weak. and then It's been like that way for the last decade, but now the NFC is coming up and just flat. He had Atlanta, who everyone thought was going to be a Super Bowl contender this year, just riddled with injuries, both sides of the ball. Right. Uh, and then Panthers you... had, the, had the hot streak beginning of the year, now they're falling off, and people hopefully are finally realizing Cam Newton is a scam Newton. 
Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, you had the 49ers. Everyone thought Robert Goat would lead him to the playoffs, and then he got injured. Yeah. Nick Mullins is quiet after that first game. And then you have the Green Bay Packers. Everybody thought, okay, they're going to win their division. But Mason then... Crosby purposely missed that kit to get his coach fired. <laughs> Oh man, oh, that would be man. funny if they actually did that. I don't think so, but it would be a little bit funny. But, but yeah. So I mean, so number one seed obviously is gonna be unless something happens, the Rams are gonna get that one seed. Yeah, the Saints at two, three is the Bears, four Cowboys, five Seahawks, and then six Vikings. Yep, I agree. So the thing is here. So everyone thinks that. A lot of people think it's, they're going to be the Saints going. And as an Atlanta fan, if the Saints go and play the Super Bowl in Atlanta, I will cry. I will cry for a week and boycott the Super Bowl. Anyway, with that being said, the Saints have the most high-powered offense in the NFC, in my opinion. Yes. Um, if they're beat, the NFC, although weaker, I feel like they have better defenses in the NFC. AFC is better offenses. They're, over they're really high-powered. They're going at it. The NFC is more balanced. It, I really like their defenses. You have Dallas, which is putting their coin in as a top defense. The Rams, who even though they gave up 50 points the other week, they still had two defensive touchdowns that week against mm -hmm. the Chiefs. So their defense is good. Seattle's defense has consistently been good. Right. The Bears' defense is scary, especially if Khalil Mack is healthy. Minnesota, I mean, you still have Xavier Rose on that team. They're shut down. Right. The defense is still powerful. Yeah. Uh, just good defenses on the NFC, and if the Saints... Don't just if they mess up once in the playoffs, I feel like they're done. Yeah, I think their offense is still high powered. I mean, there's one I just want to see how they react in these next four games. There's one game against Dallas, you know, again, like we were talking about, I think, with the Bears, like every team has that one game where they just nothing clicks. So mm -hmm. it could be just that one game they have. Plus, the Bears, then, Mitch has been out, so yeah. So I don't know, I feel like the I mean, the Saints, coming into the Cowboys game, have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Like, undisputedly. But then mm -hmm. somehow, sure. like, that defensive line of the Cowboys just tore them apart somehow. Do you so, see any situation where the Rams are not in the Super Bowl? If they go to Saints, we'll have one-on-one. -on -one. you really think the Saints will beat them twice in the same year? It's a really good team. Do you really think the Saints can do it twice in the same year? It's hard to do that. I think they could. You think they could? Mm -hmm. I think they could keep it close. I don't think it'll be as close or as far apart score wise. I think it could be an overtime game, or it could just be one of those games where the defenses come to play and like both offenses somehow just don't like mm -hmm. score. I don't see that happening, but it could could be something like that. Mm -hmm. But because in Dallas, Dak is not gonna win a championship. Okay, ever. so for He's the NFC, do you see it? Okay, it's gonna be New Orleans, LA, like NFC championship, hands yes. down. Unless, Nobody else. Unless New Orleans comes across Chicago, I feel like Chicago, if healthy, can measure up pretty well to New Orleans. And then if Chicago plays the Rams, I mean, we're gonna see that game this weekend. Yeah. So I have the Bears winning that game. I'm sticking to that. Last You're sticking podcast, to last it? podcast I said that. I'm You're sticking sti to it. I'm not sticking. Wait, I is can't. Mitch back? I think Mitch is back this week. If, is Mitch back? I need to look at that. I might change that pick. But if Mitch is back, Bears are winning. Okay. And that'll be Rams' last loss. Because the Rams but then are you, at least a 12-2 and two team. Okay, but then you think, but if New Orleans wins out, then they'll get home. All right, let's look at New Orleans' schedule. They have, da, 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 they play the Bucks this week, then the Panthers, then the Steelers, then the Panthers again. Yeah, the one. Panthers twice, division rivalry. The Bucks, as an NFC South fan, you know, Bucks always seem to pull it out on the big team at least once a year. But they already did it once this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. They did. They did. Yeah, no. No and one's the Saints, walking all over the Bucks. Now. And the Saints are coming off like a, not a humiliating loss. But so what's going to be up to your Steelers then? It is going to really be up to them. It's going to be up to James Conner. Is James Conner going to be healthy? James Conner is the key to New Orleans. Losing. <laughs> yeah. We we shall see in that game. But yeah, they play the Panthers twice and I think they'll beat them twice. Or if Cam Newton could just somehow ball out but have yeah. that one game of his career. But... So you um, want to move on to MVP predictions? Yeah, might as well. All right. So it's really, I mean, MVP, so I saw four MVP candidates. You got number one right now is Pat Mahomes. Number two is Drew Brees. Number three is Aaron Donald. Number four is Philip Rivers. No Jared Goff? No Jared You have Aaron Donald over Jared Goff? This is just what I was reading. This is not me. But 
I don't know. Jerry... A defensive player will never win MVP ever again. Not in this league. Not anymore. After all these rules. Sorry, yeah. and Arnold, you're the best defensive player in the league for sure. Do you deserve yeah. it? Most likely, probably. But no, defensive players will never get it. Honestly, I don't even know if a player other than a quarterback will ever get it. Sorry, Todd Gurley. You've also had a great year. Yeah. But... Uh, he's interesting. Uh, so, kind of going to defense. We'll come back to MVP. But defensive player of the year. Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald. You think Aaron Donald's got hands down? or Just because Mack has been struggling with inter- injuries, yes. Okay. If Mack has been healthy all year, I give it to Mack. But Donald's been healthy. He's been playing consistent football. Yeah. He's a big part why they beat the Chiefs that game. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think Aaron Donald has changed games for the Rams. Like, he's the reason why the Rams won a good amount of their games. But also, you could say the same thing for Khalil Mack. Like, Khalil Mack is the reason they're eating for it. Isn't Aaron Donald's rookie contract up after this year? I think he just signed a huge contract. Oh, really? Oh, I thought it was up after this year. No, he signed a huge contract. That He was holding out That's most good. of the offseason. I like Aaron Donald. Oh, he's, like so he's a good, good dude. I know. So good. But... So going back to the MVP, so do you think it's between Mahomes and Breeze, or do you think there could be a... Mahomes and Breeze, for sure, it's between them two. And it's going to be the last four games of the year. If Mahomes can play well without Kareem Hunt, I think he should get if it. If you look at consistency, Drew Breeze, he's yes. got two interceptions all year, he's playing consistent football, he's getting seats in positions to win. He also has Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas to throw to. Yeah. But... It, but if you look at explosive power and how much a player has impacted a team, the only things the Chiefs have changed from last year to this year is quarterback. They get rid of Alex Smith, and then they bring they start Pat, Pat Mahomes, you know? And Pat Mahomes has led this team to being the most explosive team in football. Yes. And it, Kermit the Frog, man, I'm telling you, he, he might get it just because of how much of a difference he's made. Yeah. I don't know. If, see, if Drew Brees didn't win MVP, he should have done it a while ago gotten into that a while ago because he's been the most valuable player for that team for the last decade right now all of a sudden i feel like he's not their sole reason for their success yes this is the one year i feel like the saints could do good without him really like if he were to go down and they had a decent backup quarterback i still feel like the saints are a winning team if you so take pat decent. off the chiefs i don't know if i can say the same okay okay but talking about value to a team yeah I although see. drew Brees does deserve an mvp in his career that's what i'm saying i think if I was choosing an MVP, I'd want to choose Drew Brees mostly for that reason. It'd be hard to go against but, Mahomes, though. Yeah. If, if... We'll see the last four weeks. We'll see what he can do without Kareem Hunt. Yep. And against good teams yep. like Kansas City and... He is right, Kansas against, City. Against <laughs> Denver. LA Chargers and Denver. If he plays Denver. But, Did they play Denver again? I don't think they played Denver. They already played twice. They probably already played twice. Okay. So, against those... You know, I think they have, like, one... Uh, they play Baltimore this weekend, so... And pretty good defense. So, I mean, you play against those type of defenses. I mean, the Rams' defense is a pretty good defense, and you, you know, let them up. And so did Drew Brees. So, you know, both having pretty good seasons. I wouldn't mind either of them getting, but I'm going to say I would want Drew Brees to win, but Pat Mahomes is going to win it. Offensive rookie of the year? Saquon Barkley. I know you're going to... Would you say, Phil? I think Lindsay? Saquon is going to get it. Because but, of his name, yeah, I think Lindsey deserves it more. Okay. Although you can't overlook Nick Chubb and uh, Baker Mayfield over there. This rookie running back class, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Nick Chubb is gonna be a stud Except, in this league. It's just so funny how Rashard Penny was picked in the first round and he's not a part. Like, I mean, granted, he has shown two or three games where he has mm-hmm. been so good. But also, you have Chris Carson in that backfield. Who, when he's healthy, he's been playing really well the mm-hmm. last couple of games. So, but I would really like to see him play well. But yeah, I will. I will. I mean, when I saw that Nick Chubb didn't get drafted in the first round, I was like, Are you kidding me? Like yes, I saw. I I know he had an injury, but he was so good in college. Like in so, and then you see, Carlos Hyde get traded from the Browns. I was like, finally, now we have Nick Chubb can finally show what he can do, and he's been showing that. Yes, uh, defensive player, the, defensive rookie of the year, Derwin James. Really? Yep. I want to say nothing more than Derwin James gets that. But Van Der Esch, dude. Oh, okay. He's I, good. I do like Van Der Esch too, but I want to give it. He, he's games. heading arguably the best defense in the league right now as a rookie. Okay. Although I think Derwin James in three years will be the best safety in football. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the biggest steals in the NFL draft this past year. 
for sure. No, no doubt. Yep. How about Coach of the Year? Coach of the Year? Sean Payton. Uh, no, not Sean. What? No, not him. Um, Who is the Bears coach? N- names escaping me. Matt Rams. Nagy? Rams. It- McAvoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Um, His name Sean is McVay. Right now. Sean McVay, yes. Okay. Sean McVay. Although you brought up a good point with the Bears coach. What about, what about Bill O'Brien? Texans? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe. It's tough. It's tough. Or what about Chargers coach? Um, oh, you're bringing up so many possibilities <laughs> right? right now. Chargers. Chargers coach. Char- yeah, well, you're high in the Chargers. Dude. You're right. You love right. the Chargers. I, I want the Chargers go, right now. I want to go with the Bears coach. I think Matt Nagy is his name. Chargers coach. I love... I've never seen that turnaround on this team. Incredible. That turnaround. But you could also say the same thing for the Texans. Comeback player of the year. Say it on three. One, two, three. Andrew Luck. You didn't say it. Oh, I, did, I want to say AP, but then I can't because he had he had one good play. Andrew Luck has been out for two years and he's playing lights out right now. You're not going to give it to Luck? I want to say somebody else besides Andrew <coughs> Luck. I don't know why. But names are escaping me right now. <laughs> names are escaping you? Yeah, so I'm just going to say Andrew Luck because I can't think of anybody else right now. JJ? You could say JJ. You but, could say JJ. But I don't know if I want to put him there, though. I mean, because I, cause I don't think he's the number one reason why the Texans are playing as well as they are. But he is a big reason why, though. With him, and then you got the JVM Clowney on that end, and then you have Deshaun Watson playing lights out. Remember when everyone was screaming bust at Clowney when he first got drafted? <laughs> These people look like fools now. Yeah, they do. Yeah, number one overall draft pick, and he's definitely showing that he was worth it. Even though the, his first year, he was out the entire year. So As a Falcons fan, Vic Beasley, bust. Okay. He is. He doesn't have anything since that year. Okay. So, that's about it. That's really all we got to talk about, right? Yeah, I think we unless you want to talk about the NFL draft, but that might be another conversation for another day. Yeah, do we have? Uh, yeah, we can talk about that next semester. Yeah, definitely. Well, this will be our last podcast for this semester, but uh, yep. next semester we'll probably do about three or four of these. Yeah, we're consistently. definitely come back for the Super Bowl, talk about the NFL draft a little bit. Absolutely. Yep, and then talk about just the end of the season, free agency in March. Oh, that's gonna be good. Yes, I'm excited really for free agency. Good. It's always fun. Last year's free agency was so much fun. Like everybody's like, where's who... Kirk Cousins gonna go? And oh, Coach of the Year. We didn't even talk about my boy John Gruden. Oh my gosh! Don't even talk about John Gruden right now. Or his brother <laughs> Jay. Like, I just think it'd be funny if like. I think free agency's gonna free agency's gonna be a lot more fun with John Gruden around. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like. Le'Veon Bell going to the Raiders. Oh, ooh. Is well, they have Lynch though. I mean, Lynch is kind of out. I wouldn't. Could say you imagine it. a one-two punch, Le'Veon Bell and Marshawn Lynch? That might actually be kind of dangerous. <laughs> That'd be insane. They need an offensive line though. Uh, they need wide receivers as well. Well, they shouldn't have got rid of Mara <laughs> Cooper now, shouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple solution there, Mr. Buddy John. Yeah, well. Also, <laughs> just kind of ending, so you, do you think the Amari Cooper trade to Dallas was successful? I think he's playing pretty well in Dallas. Like It's successful for Dallas? Yes. Well, not not for... I mean, he uh, is playing very well in Dallas. Right. He's, I was talking about on Dallas's end. Like, yeah, do you think Dallas he was worth first round pick? Right now, at least, in the way their season's turning around? Dallas is going to have an upper round first round pick. I don't know if they get anyone great at that spot, so yeah, I think it was a good choice. Yeah. Because Amari Cooper, I mean, he's what they needed since the Des Bryant fiasco happened. Yeah, that's true. And he's doing great things there right now. He's playing like a first round pick. So Yeah, definitely. Alright, well, I have been Brandon. And I have been Justin. And uh, we will see you guys next semester. Good yeah. night, Bridgewater. Yeah, good night. <laughs>